drive home. Well, how was your night, you lazy old cat? Embassy party. Or would you say something? If this is some kind of a joke, I don't think it's very funny. What are you doing? Wow! 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 We'll have a statement for you at some later time, ma'am. Thank you. Again, more conflicting reports as to the link between the deaths of three models and still no conclusive identification of the killer. Cindy Davis, Midtown Manhattan. Now, you've mouthed off to the press in my jurisdiction for the last time. Well, it wouldn't have happened if you'd have picked up Duquesne. He was at the embassy at an embassy party in front of 45 diplomats at the time of the killing. I didn't say he wasn't smart. I said he was a psycho. Now, he killed my little girl in Texas. A few weeks ago, he killed that model in Chicago. Last night, he killed Karen Barton. Captain, if you'll just give me a little more time, I'll bust his alibi. It's too late for that. What do you mean by that? Duquesne took the 6 o'clock flight to Sorrento, Italy this morning. And you let him go? What good is that badge you're wearing? Not much, stacked up next to his diplomatic immunity. That's just like admitting he's guilty. That, that's the way you and I see it, but to them it's some sort of a shield that they use to protect themselves from political harassment in a foreign country. I'll tell you what, Captain. When the police start protecting scum like that, I don't have any use for this anymore. Do me a favor, mail it back to Fort Worth. I don't need it. Cody. Don't do anything crazy. Crazy? Me? Why, Captain, I'm as sane as Duquesne. You remember him? The guy who left for Italy on the plane this morning? This is my best one, the highest quality workmanship. But I must ask a very high price. I brought you here because I want to discuss a murder. Danielle, a young woman that you knew is dead. Karen Barton. Oh, no. Beside Karen, there were two other models who were murdered in a six-month period. Diane Cody and Martha Harriet. Henry, I hadn't heard anything about this. This is Diane Cody's father. He's a deputy sheriff from Fort Worth. He followed a diplomat here by the name of Eric Duquesne. He thinks that Duquesne killed his daughter, and we think that he's going to kill Duquesne. You're going to stop him. What exactly do you want us to do? Detective Cody got off an airplane and disappeared in Italy. But we know where his target is. Eric Duquesne is a career diplomat. He has rented a penthouse on the top floor of this hotel. And you figure his being here will draw Cody out in the open? You put on a beautiful show with those models of yours. And I'll guarantee it. Duquesne will show up. And Cody won't be far behind. Great. This is unbelievable. We're going after a good cop and a grieving father just to protect a possible homicidal maniac? Yeah. This is a terrific assignment. I say we blow it off and go home. I say we do whatever Henry wants and more. Well, you're not thinking of disobeying Henry and going after the killer, are you? Whatever gave you that idea? Ah. Oh, I like your style. I spend a lot of time in the stockade with people that think like you. Huh. Mm -hmm. 
Well, one thing. Don't you think it's a little bit rude to be asking those models to be baked for a psycho without giving them some kind of warning? Mac, huh? you know I'm going to protect my girls. I'll think of something. Here's all the Need a hand. Mac, I'll take anything you give me. Yeah, promises, promises. Oh. I understood how these things. Hey, Danny, our uh, Casanova has arrived. None of you guys are going to believe this, but I just met the most elegant man, a real-life ambassador. Oh, really? Huh. There's the bait. Where's the hunter? Problem solved. Oh, good man. Okay. Where's Mac? Look, now, don't blame him disappearing on me. Look, I'm not a babysitter, Danny. I'm working hard. Catch anything? Not yet, but I'm patient. Pretty handsome tackle box you got there. Uh, mind if I take a look? Oh, professional secrets. You must not be much of a fisherman. Well, not much ocean stuff. I'm uh, from a farm. Honey, you don't look like it. Oh, well, uh, I'm a model. See, we're doing a shoot up here. Which reminds me, I'd best get back here. Good luck. Luck has nothing to do with it, friend. It's all in the bait. shouldn't blow your head off. <clears throat> Why don't you put the gun down? I'll explain everything. Now, why did you follow me here? Your tackle box. What about it? It's all freshwater gear. Had to be some of the reasons besides fishing for you to be out on the pier. Not bad at all. Tell me more. I'm here to protect the girls. Protect them from what? Three models were murdered in the States. The, uh, ladies got a little bit nervous, so the agency hired me to watch out for them. And you suspected me? First day out, you're fishing for freshwater trout in the Mediterranean Sea? How would you figure it? Now, uh, unless you are the murderer, I'd appreciate it if you'd, uh, put the gun down. Well, you're right about one thing. I am here because of the models. That's my daughter. She was murdered in the States. And I know who did it, a guy named Duquesne, and I'm here to stop him. To kill him? Not my idea of a good cop. No, not to kill him. 
to bust him and put him away forever. Look, when those New York City cops threw in the towel at the first sign of an alibi, I kept on going. And I know how he killed Karen Barton. How? Huh. Look, they ran some kind of fundraising documentary film in a room that was as dark as a coal mine. It was pitch black. Duquesne started off talking on a microphone. But I got hold of that film, and his narration is right there recorded on it. So that gave him an hour to leave the room, go to Karen's killer, and get back. I timed it. You run all this past the New York City police? Yeah, I ran it past them. I'm a country cop, man. I had about as much pull as Custer with the Indians. Look, this is Duquesne. Now, when it comes to guessing what he's going to do, I know better than he does what his next move is. You need that to protect your models, don't you? Why don't we work on this thing together? We got a deal? We'll be at the city gardens first thing in the morning. What are you, crazy? The man flew 10,000 miles to kill Duquesne. Oh, come on, Danny, you don't believe that. Why don't you just walk in the hotel the first day he was here and blow him away? Maybe he didn't have a gun yet. I don't know. What I do know is he tried to nail Duquesne by the book when he was in New York and no one would listen to him. Well, at least now he knows he's got somebody on his side. How can you do something like this without talking to me? Hey, he's my responsibility. He's our responsibility. <sighs> don't worry, I got it covered. <laughs> smile. Yeah, it's 85 degrees out here and I'm wearing wool. It's kind of difficult to smile. <laughs> That's the price of glamour. Smile. Smile. <laughs> Ricky, load some film. Take five. Thank you. Wait. Whoa, it's hot. I spotted him. Yeah, I know, me too. I want to go talk to him, but I don't think we have anything to worry about. I'm not so sure about that. Henry called, said that Duquesne was going to come to the shoot. You didn't say anything to Henry, did you? I had to. If Henry comes down here and does something stupid... Look, I'll be right back. Don't do anything at all. Cody, look, we gotta talk. I don't know if this was such a good idea. If you're gonna be hanging around... Relax. Here, we made a deal. I'll stick with it. Look at that guy. And all those girls. I'm watching. You all right? Yeah, I'm terrific. Look, you just hang in there. Between us, we're gonna make sure Duquesne behaves himself. Us, huh? Yeah. I thought we made a deal. Hey, look, don't panic. I can handle this. Sorry, Mac. I liked you. You're a good man. It's not working out. The man's got to do what he's got to do. Danny, I'd like you to meet someone very special. This is Eric Duquesne. If you'll excuse us, we have some work to do. Billy?
be risking our cover. You could also send our man right over the edge. You'll have to trust me on this one, Daniel. I know what I'm doing is right. I hope so. Be careful. Look out, everybody hit the deck! <laughs> American walking the streets with a gun is a vigilante. It's the worst possible image for our country. Image? Henry, you amaze me. Do you honestly believe that hunting down a grieving father instead of a psychopathic killer is the kind of image you want to sell of American justice? We're going after Duquesne. No, we're not. Yes, we are. That's not why we're here. Well, it is now. You made it look like I went back on my word. Danielle, will you please talk some sense into this? I'm on his side. It doesn't really matter. We've probably already blown our cover. We can't begin to explain why the police arrived before the shooting. And as far as our friend Mr. Duquesne is concerned, he's probably barricaded himself inside of his embassy by now. I'll get it. I trust I'm not intruding. Oh, of course not. Uh, you remember my friend, Henry Townley? Uh, the gentleman that arrived with the police shortly before the shooting. Yes, uh, that was some kind of a mix-up. I believe an explanation is in order. You see, my so-called image has a downside, which results sometimes in crank threats. Though, obviously, this time, not a crank. I must congratulate you on moving so quickly. You probably saved one of us from being killed. Uh, you get threats, too, Mr. Duquesne. I'm a diplomat. We, too, pay a price for celebrity. I was to have a party this evening to celebrate my moving out of this hotel and into my new villa. Please, won't the three of you join me? And uh, the models, of course. Darn, didn't you say, Danielle, that you were winding up your shoot and leaving tonight? No. We'd love to come. Marvelous. Come by around eight. My villa is on Da Vinci Boulevard. Vinci. And thank you again. You're welcome. All I'm going to do is looking around at the party, nothing more. It's always more. No, no, no. You're both off the case. Oh, oh, come on, Henry. Can you think of a better way to trap Cody? A private party at Duquesne's own villa. You can't have it both ways, Henry. Anyway, you were invited. I'll watch them while I'm dancing. <laughs> Good evening. Hello, Henry. You make a great entrance. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mac. Hey, Henry, how are you? Oh, champagne. Thank you. Have you seen our host? No, and it's making me nervous. No reason to be nervous, Henry. As long as the girls are with us, I'm sure they're safe. Hmm. Yourself? Yes. You give a lovely part. I have a fascination for people. I enjoy getting into their minds. Intellectual dissection? Is that especially true for models? You're always accused of being vacuous. Oh, come now, my dear. I mean, after all, isn't it you that uh, 
takes the plain, simple woman and transforms her into the irresistible seductress? I suppose you could look at it that way. Oh, don't misunderstand me. I mean, there's nothing the matter with seduction. It's a, it's a game played by two willing participants. The cat and the mouse, or more dangerously, the flame. The tears is the moth. And are you the flame, Mr. Duquesne? Or the moth? Excuse me. Only you had his money. Derek, our host. Gretchen, honey, I wouldn't look now, but you're, uh punk is spreading himself a little thin. Oh, you'd like to know. Yeah. Well, she's very charming, and she's about five foot seven. I really do like her very much. Do you uh, think you could keep Duquesne entertained for about ten minutes? Now, what are you up to? I can take care of him. I don't like the sound of this. I want you to promise me that... I promise. Promise me what? That there won't be any sound. Someday you two are going to surprise me and let me know what's going on. Henry, I think the shock would be too much for you. But not to worry. Duquesne seems to be entertained for the moment. We've done our job. I'm going to wrap this whole thing up right now. You can't, Henry. That shrine of the canes will look like a chamber of horrors. And if we leave, his next victim is your responsibility. And guess whose picture had a prominent place in his pick hits of the future? Rachel. All the more reason not to stick around. If one more thing goes wrong... What's going to go wrong? Rachel's missing. Well, she can't be missing. I put her to bed myself. Well, she must have snuck out past me first thing this morning and headed out. Well, where to? She left a note. Went off with Eric to have fun in the sun. See you guys later, Rachel. She went off with Count Dracula? Now what are we going to do? I'll tell you downstairs. Come on. <laughs> So you're the ones who want to see me, huh? Well, go fly a kite. Come on, Paisan, take me back to my cell. I like the company better. Hey, Cody, hang on a second. We can make you a deal. Yeah, what kind of deal? Get you out of here, drop all charges. Next plane out, you'll be escorted back to the States. In the meantime, a federal agent babysits you back at your hotel.
Who are you people? You know who we are. I know who you are, but I don't know what you are. What do you want from me? Hey, listen to this. I found a gallery of photographs in Duquesne's study last night. They're arranged in, uh, I don't know, some kind of weird ritualistic order. But I recognize your daughter's picture as one of them. And right next to that was a picture of one of our models. This morning she left with him. We can't find him. Now, Max says, if anyone knows his moves, you do. Max, right. Well, so what do you say? We got a deal? Look, you're responsible for my being in here. I came out here to keep something like this from happening. Hey, we're not responsible for... He killed my little girl. Now, you give me one good reason why I should help you do anything. I knew your daughter. Now, we can't bring her back. But we can prevent the same thing happening to another model. Is that a good enough reason? All right. He likes women. He likes hunting. He likes boats. Now, last Friday, I followed him to a boat basin. He has a luxury yacht there. My guess is... That's where he is. Eric? Is there anything I can do to help? No, thank you, my dear. You just sit tight, and I'll be right there. Okay. This yacht's name is Stiletto took off about 20 minutes ago. Now, they said that we could hire an offshore speedboat and catch him. Now, he's not going to kill her yet. He hadn't had a chance to set up his alibi. Why'd he take her out there? Well, he's a smart guy, right? After what happened the last couple of days, maybe he's trying to find out if we really are what we say we are. You mean get her out there alone and get some information? Yeah, could be. She says the wrong thing, and that boat will be in Yugoslavia by morning. Yeah, and if you're wrong, you'll have blown any chance we have of catching Duquesne. You go racing out there like that, he's going to know you're on to him. Well, maybe not. Maybe Danny's reputation could work for us. What, am I supposed to be flattered? What is that supposed to mean? I'd like to throw a fast party. Great idea. I'll get the ladies. We'll get the boat. Come on. And you were telling me about Mac. There's not much to tell. You were right about his training. He was in some special unit in the Marines. So, he is much more than just a male model. Not anymore. Danny discovered him on some marine recruiting poster. <laughs> He's been discharged and was living on a farm in Minnesota. The rest you know. I will be right back now. I want you to wait here with your eyes tightly shut. Tight. Are you ready for your surprise? I'm ready. for your surprise, my dear? I think I hear it. What? Hi! Uh, sorry to interrupt you there, old man, uh, but you know how the boss loves a good party. Permission to come aboard. Granted. Ashley. Come on, Harry. Watch your step. Rich. Billy. Danny. How was it going? Look at this. Mm. Eric spent the whole morning carving these little flowers. <laughs> a master with a blade if ever I saw one. Are you sure we're not intruding? I can see that no party would be complete without you, Danny. Well, everything is in place. Two of my best men have Cody under house arrest at his hotel, and we can all leave first thing in the morning. Yes, but we did not get Duquesne. I told you before, and I'll tell you again. It's not our job. It's somebody's job, Henry. Can we 
to talk to you for a minute? Sure. You said to keep you informed about our personal lives, right? No, I said you had no personal lives until further notice. Well, while you were gone, Eric called and said he wanted to see me tonight. Alone. He stressed the alone part. No, damn it. Relax. It's off. What did you do, cancel? No, he did, about 20 minutes ago. He has to go out of town tonight. He's flying to Paris. He wants me to call him there at 10 o'clock. Gresham, did he ask you where you'd be tonight? Yeah, he did. I told him we were all turning in early because we're catching a morning flight. Do you have that phone number with you? Yeah. May I see it, please? How could he ask her to call him at a phone number in Paris and still be in Italy? I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Danny, I think Gretchen should make that call. I agree. But you should know you could be in a little bit of danger. Unfortunately, it's the only way to stop this man. He's... he's a killer. Killer? You're asking a lot. You'll be okay. I'll be with you all the time. You'll be safe. up in your room. When the cane makes his move, Gretchen will scream. I'll be there in seconds. All right, thank you, operator. Gretchen, the number he gave you is his embassy in Paris. And it's a working number. So if he expects me to call him there, then he must have left the country. Sorry, but uh, I don't think he went anywhere. Neither do I. Don't know how he does it, but... Answer it, but try and act relaxed. No problem. Hello? Yeah, just a minute. It's for you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Gretchen. I had my calls forwarded because... Of course. Call forwarding. <laughs> and totally non-traceable. You make a phone call and it's immediately forwarded to the new program number. And that means Decane could still be in this building. If he wants to get in her room, he has to go through the door. We have plenty of time, even if he has a passkey. Eights and fives. Three ladies. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll be back in a minute. Now, you know the rules. Look, I had a lot of beer, okay? All right. Just don't take too long. I think I can handle it alone. Thanks. Cody, how long are you going to be? I'll be out in a minute. in the ante. Ten o'clock. Time to make the call. I know. Sound happy. I'm so glad you called. I said I would, didn't I? Well, beautiful women sometimes have a habit of disappointing a man. Well, here I am, right on cue. 
I find your voice very exciting. When will I see you again? Soon. Very soon. I want to fly you all to our Paris embassy for a party. It's going to be the biggest party in the history of France. Right now, I just want to talk to you. I'll call you first thing in the morning. Good night, my darling. Good night. Doing here, you're gonna blow our whole set. It's already blown. Cody has escaped. That's oh, terrific. That's all we need. A shootout with Gretchen in the middle. I say we call the game. Why? All we have to do is keep Cody away. He has no idea what we're doing. She's right, Henry. Look, I can cover the corridor from the window where I hid the camera. You cover the elevators from the lobby. Why do I always have the feeling that I have no choice? You have a choice. We'll talk about it on the way. Come on. All right, now. This will keep you in constant touch. We just carry these things around with you? Be careful. You be careful. After Gretchen, but why bother with the ladies of the court when I can go for the queen? Mac, the lobby is almost empty. Either of them will be easy to spot. I hope you're right. Because you are the most beautiful and the most corrupt of them all. You're worse than the others because you're the goddess that creates them. They seduce, and they twist, and they torment. In the night, oh. I'll never be. But for all of this, you must be punished, Danny. Uh, uh, listen to me. It doesn't have to be like this. There won't be any torment, I promise. Mac, two other thoughts. In the basement, there's a stairway they could use. Also, the service elevator. If you want an airtight alibi, you don't place a call to the person you're going to kill. Because after she's dead, you don't have an alibi anymore. The model's rooms are in the middle. Danny's and mine are on either side. He doesn't have to use the hall, Henry. Mac, what are you talking about? He'll get in through room 208. Mac, there's an elderly lady in 208. I saw her. Don't bet on us. Please, let me help you. I don't want you to help me. I want you to scream. I want you to know that this is the most exciting moment of my life. One move, Mr. Harper, and she's dead. It's over. You drop the knife and you at least live. I'll live anyway. You've no proof of anything. Once out of here, I'm free. All your cameras were turning the wrong way. She's coming with me. Move! 
Follow and I'll kill her. I'm warning you, Duquesne. Cody got away. He's waiting for you out there somewhere. You're not going to leave this city alive. You think I'm worried about some pot-bellied cop? That's a mistake, Duquesne. I'm going to kill you. Put down the gun, old man. Unless you want to be responsible for Mrs. Reynolds' death. Better listen to him, Cody. You're not working with very good odds. Especially with your hands shaking. Put the gun down. I didn't come all this way to let him walk away now. He's not going anywhere. You won't risk hitting her! I'm a specialist, Duquesne. Fourth level marksman. You have any idea what that means in military parlance? They bring out guys with my training to pick off airline hijackers in a darkened cockpit at 500 yards. At this range, you aren't even a challenge. Please! It's not gonna hurt you, Danny, I promise. You better get me with the first shot, otherwise I'm gonna slit her throat. Now, are you that good? You see that zero above your left ear? The temporal lobe. You'll be dead in seconds. Matt, please. Ready? Aim. Could you just do me a favor? Yeah. Would you just give me a hug for a second? Maybe I'll hug you as long as you like. Tell me you went around. No, I'm an early riser. I took myself a nice long walk down by the water. Watched the sun come up. I think it's the beginning of a good day. Oh, uh, the beginning of a lot of good days. You going back to the States? No, I think I need a little vacation. I got some old wounds that need healing. They never really go away, but they do get better. See you, Cody. Girls, please, come on. You know, I gave you a pretty rough time back there. I want to thank you for hanging in with me. No, no, it's okay, Cody. I want a day's work. Now, that's something that puzzles me. After all this, I still don't know exactly what kind of work you're in. <laughs> well, uh, let's just say we travel a lot, Cody. Every now and then, we run into a friendly face from the old US of A that could use a little help. You just happen to be one of them. Strictly unofficial. Oh, yeah. Strictly unofficial. Well, I don't know how it works. But I sure do admire your choice of hired hands. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, all like sisters to me, Cody. 